how are you? Good afternoon, my name is Danielle Crouch. I'm with DC Water. Handing out flyers. DC Water. Leaving messages. All right, uh, 1262, no engagement, they leave information. It's not a political campaign these volunteers across Washington, D.C. are canvassing for. Okay. And at this time, D.C. Water is offering a lead-free program to have your service line replaced for free. But rather a push to get the lead out of all pipes in our nation's capital. The same mission in place across America. So when you start to think about uh, drinking water in this area, we service about 700,000 residents in the District of Columbia. Kirsten Williams is with D.C. Water, a utility company covering D.C., parts of Maryland, and Northern Virginia. So just this past year, we have knocked on over 24,000 doors to educate them about our Lead Free D.C. program. We tagged along with D.C. Water, getting an exclusive look as they walked, excavated roads and yards, and informed their customers about their lead replacement program. An efficient and aggressive push to make water lines safer for the homeowners they serve. What they found, in some cases, unexpected. Yeah, it's incredible that there's still a pipe out there that's 130 years old and carrying water to us every day. It's wild. To understand what's going on here, there are a few things we're digging into. A national mandate to replace lead service lines, one that's proving difficult for many cities. A history in America of using lead service lines, but not always documenting them effectively. And of course, the growing concern over the health impacts of having lead leaching into our water. In the 10-year plan to get the lead out, fall 2024 marked a big milestone. Water systems nationwide had an October 16th deadline to submit their initial lead inventory numbers to their states. We asked for all the inventories to find out how big the job to replace all the pipes will be. We found some states like Massachusetts reported that they received 99% of their water systems inventories. But we also found states where hundreds of water departments missed that deadline. In Virginia, for example, around 300 water systems out of more than 1,500 did not turn in their inventories on time. In Georgia, over 400 out of more than 1,900 water systems did not meet that deadline either. But this deadline is nothing new. Our national investigative team reported back in April that the inventory deadline was approaching, but that there could be setbacks. The process, many states said, unworkable, underfunded, and unnecessary under an impossible timeline. So how did our water systems get to this point? To understand how we got here, you have to go back in time when the lead industry promoted the use of lead pipes, despite there being complaints and major concerns about the use of lead pipes on a person's health. Do you think there's a direct correlation between the history that we've had in this country with promoting lead and what we're noticing today? Yeah, we have a legacy of a, a history of an industry that promoted its product, ignored the public health warnings, um, and now we're paying the price. Public health researcher Richard Raven has been documenting the lead industry's history for more than 30 years. Combing through a large box of lead industry records, he showed our team the messaging used by companies dating back a century. Uh, public health people, doctors by and large, when they became uh, knowledgeable around the issue, were saying, you the engineers, you the code producers, you've got a point, but the problem is you're causing people to be poisoned. And slowly, gradually, that message got through. Starting around the 1920s and certainly by 1930, plumbing codes were eliminating the use of lead. But the lead companies, the lead pipe people, did not let that stop them. Rabin says to downplay the dangers, the Lead Industries Association sent workers around the country to promote the use of lead, using ads like these in newspapers and magazines. Lead pipe lasts. The Romans had lead pipes. I, I became extremely upset, you might say, that they were selling their product at the expense of the health of children and adults. And now crews are left digging for lead-laced oh, answers but laid but beneath but homes but and streets across America. Our you? first stop with the DC crew was outside of Samantha Lasky's home, where you'll see why these inventories are not only tricky, but important. 
crews here conducted what they call a test pit to look for lead pipes. We were really excited when we had an opportunity to have a free replacement and for it to be checked and then a free replacement if we needed it. That's because the EPA says wherever lead service lines are present, they represent the greatest source of exposure to lead poisoning in drinking water. So what you're looking at is a line that was removed by DC Water as part of their free replacement program. This part here that I'm holding is copper. And then this part here that's kind of black and has a little dirt on it, this is the lead part of the pipe. And it's this small part that could be so damaging to a person's health. As crews conducted the test pit outside Lasky's home, they made a surprising discovery. It wasn't a lead pipe below the surface. In this particular incident, you know, we have some copper, which we were not expecting, which is why we come out and do a test pit, because old neighborhoods like Washington, D.C., you don't always know what your service line materials are. Yeah, when we started this program in 2019, we thought we had about 28,000 lead service lines. When we come out to go do those test pits and try to better identify what that service line material is, we realized we had a much higher number, so we're about 42,000. But even that is, un there are some unknowns with that. But unknown water lines and sometimes wrong historical data are the challenges several water departments are facing across the country as they try to identify the number and location of their lead service lines, uncovering more lead pipes than they originally anticipated with unknowns adding to an already murky set of lead pipe data. But now there could be a futuristic solution to 100-year-old rickety record keeping. Blue Conduit, a water analytics company based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, is using modern day technology to help find lead pipe locations and uncover unknowns. And so we started using data science machine learning to predict address by address where the lead was. Machine learning, also known as AI, is what Blue Conduit co-founder Eric Schwartz believes is the solution to helping communities with their lead inventory numbers. They're working with over 350 cities, towns, and communities to identify their lead service line inventories, helping reduce the amount of labor and costs on water departments, while identifying places with higher concentrations of lead. And so when we look at other service lines where we know all of those pieces of information except the material, we can then make a prediction, a best guess. What's the likelihood that this address has a lead pipe? It's a tactic DC Water is using too, taking advantage of groundbreaking technology and community engagement. So for us, it, it eliminates the ability to not have to test pit every home to identify. There's a cost to test pitting, and certainly for us, we want to make sure we're maximizing every dollar on replacing lead. Utilizing every resource possible to get the lead out of one of the nation's oldest cities, making the water lines for homeowners safer, one block at a time. We have seen throughout the country that lead in our water um, has led to really terrible consequences for people in communities around the country. So I'm glad that here in DC we're already taking care of it.